Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on Eat the Blocks. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can declare and manipulate struct in Solidity. By the way, I created a free email course to teach you how I got my first remote blockchain job paid $100,000 a year. So if you want to learn all my secrets, you just have to sign up at this URL. Solidity struct are really great to represent structured data in your spot contract. The basic idea is that you define a template with different fields that represent your data. And after you will create several clones of this template with exactly the same field, but they will have different value. So this is a little bit similar to classes in JavaScript, except that with Solidity struct, you can only define fields, but you cannot define any method. So I know that it sounds a little bit abstract. So let's get into it and let's give some specific examples. So we're going to see four things. First, we're going to see how to declare a struct. Then we're going to see how we can do the four basic operation, create, read, update, and delete a struct. Then we're going to see some more exotic combinations such as an array of struct and a mapping of structs. So let's get started by declaring a struct. So let's declare a struct here outside of any functions. We use the struct keyword. And after that, we have to put the name of the struct. So by convention, we name this struct with an uppercase. So I'm going to create a struct that is called user. Then I open the curly braces and I define the fields of my user struct. So for that, I use the same syntax as we normally use for declaring normal variables. So if you don't know how to declare variable in Solidity, check out my video on Solidity variables in this series. You'll find a link in the description. So let's create the first field for our user and we're going to make this an address field. And then we need to give a name to this field. So we cannot reuse the address keyword because that's reserved for the type. So we can use an abbreviation like uh, ADDR like this, and we terminate this by a semicolon. Okay, so we're going to create another field. For example, uh, it can be an integer that stores the score of a user. So we define an integer and then the score. Okay, and finally, let's give it a last name like uh, a string. So string name semicolon. All right, so we have declared our user struct, but at this stage, this is just a template. It is not stored anyway. So we need to create instances of this struct. So let's see how we can do this. So let's create a function first because we create instances inside function. We make it external. And first we're gonna declare a variable type of type user. So user, and we're gonna make it in memory. And then we give it a name, so user, but this time with u lowercase. And after that, we reuse the user keyword and we open parentheses. So this means create a new struct. And after that, we need to pass the parameters to this struct so that it can populate the different field. So the first one is the address. So I'm going to use the address of the sender of the transaction. Then for the score, uh, let's put uh, zero. And for the name, well, we could have an argument in our function. So string called data uh, underscore name. And here in my struct, then I use this argument to create my struct. Okay, and so with this, we have created our user struct. So here, let's call this user one. So now, if I create another struct, user2, then user1 and user2 are totally independent. If I modify user2, it will not have any consequence on user1. Okay, so this is the first syntax to create a struct, but there is another syntax that allow you to put the parameters out of order. So let's see how this works. So let's create another user, user, uh, user3. Uh, so uh, this time uh, we still use the user keyword, but inside we're going to use curly braces. So for example, we can start with the name. So here, name, colon, and then the value, then a comma and score, and we initialize it at zero. And finally the address, so 
address and here msg sender okay and so yes yeah, so the big advantage of this notation is that you don't have to remember the order of the variable but the disadvantage is that it's a little bit more verbose so yeah choose the notation that is the easiest to use for you then how can we read a field of our user so let's say that we want to read the address field of user 3 so user 3 dot a d d r so that's how we would access this field etc for the other field so you just have to remember the dot notation so this is very easy then how can we update a field so for that you reuse the same notations so for example user 3 dot score and you just assign the new value so for example make it 20 and finally how can you delete a struct well you use the delete keyword plus the name of the struct and it will delete it from memory okay so this is great but in general what we want to do is to store collection of struct in containers and we have two ways to do this one way is to declare an array of struct and the other way is by declaring a mapping of struct so let's first see how we can declare an array of struct so here above, I'm going to declare an array of struct and um, okay, let's put it after the definition of the user. Um, so we reference the struct type and then we use the square bracket notation and then we put name for our array. So users. Okay. And by the way, here my U is lowercase. So after in our function, let's add some user to our array so users dot push because this is an array so we have access to the push method and inside we can either reference a user that we created before or we could directly instantiate a user so push user and here you will give all your argument to your user okay so this is one way to have a collection of struct, but we have an other way with mappings. So below the user array, let's define a mapping. And for the key of the mapping, we want to pick something that is unique to each struct. So in this case, the address will be unique. So I'm going to specify that the key is address and it's going to map to a user. And I'm going to call this uh, user uh, list uh, two, for example. Okay. And after in my function, I can add some user to this mapping. So user list two. And here I reference a new user by its key. So for example, MHT sender. And here I can assign to user two but I could also create a new user directly. So I could do like user and then put in all the variable. Well, you get the ID. So struct are really great to represent structured data. And every time you find yourself defining too many variable in your smart contract, that might be a sign that these would be better inside a struct. Okay, so that's it for this video. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can use another type that is defined by user and that is called enums. See you for the next video.